Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues. This is Session 3, Part 6 of the discussion, God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance, where Jesus and Mary continue discussing the operation of God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, introducing our responsibility to forgive and repent, and our role in engaging both processes. This session was recorded on 6 of September 2017 from 12.15 p.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Personal motivations driving my desire to repent. Yes. <laughs> so, God's laws, as we've said, operate on our sincerity. Yes. On our sincere intentions and desires. Mm. So, obviously, um, we can have insincere motivations mm. uh, and we can have insincere motivations when it comes to the idea of repentance but basically what is going to be motivi motivating a, a sincere desire um, what what's going to be required within that desire to make it sincere yeah so the motivation again is, is the same kind of motivation that's going to desire uh, drive our desire to forgive, forgive. and that is a desire to be loving, yeah. a desire, a sincere desire to love. So to love as God loves. Yes, to love as God loves. So here we're using the definition of love mm -hmm. as the way God defines love, not the way humans define love. Yeah. And having a sincere desire to love is the thing that's going to motivate us to repent for things that we've done that harm others, that mm -hmm. harm the environment or ha have harmed our relationship, per uh, personal uh, fear towards ourselves, yep. or harmed our relationship with God. Beautiful. Mm. Okay. Mm. Insincere or unloving emotions that prevent repentance. So here now we want to talk about what is the opposite of the sincere motivation? Yeah. What are some of the motivations to repent that are insincere, unloving, and are actually going to mean that we don't actually engage a true process of repentance? Yeah, it's a good question, isn't it? So it is. the desire to forget what I have done mm. uh, is, uh, is and, and a lot of times uh, engage, we engage repentance because other people are reminding us all the time what we've done. Yeah. And we just want to forget, forget, forget what we've done. Yeah. So what we go is, fair enough, fair enough, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that they don't say it anymore. So yeah. they don't say anything to us about it anymore. So we don't have to hear about it anymore. Yeah. It's really anger. It is, isn't it? Driving us there. Yeah. Um, not a sincere desire to <laughs> repent. And we're actually, it's, we're actually not going to be able to forget about it. Even if, even if that did satisfy the people around us and they stopped mentioning it, yeah. we're not actually going to be able to sustain the forgetfulness of it, are we? That's right, because the emotions still exist in our soul. So at yeah. some point it's going to be triggered again, but yeah. also because God's laws are governing our conscience. Yes. And so God is going to be saying, that person might s stop saying it to you, but I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so God's not going to stop saying what, you, what, what he's saying to you yep. until you've actually gone through the process of repentance. Yes. Right? And what you constantly find then is that people end up having to resort to using substances like food, like alcohol, like drugs in order to sort of try and dampen or suppress the problems that their conscience is giving them. Exactly. To shut down the knowledge of what they've done wrong. Yeah, God gets very insistent. Yes, <laughs> over many <laughs> and the, years. And the mechanism of the conscience is open to God, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> and <Yeah>. unfortunately, <laughs> and the law of attraction, of course, works perfectly, and all these other laws work perfectly. Sooner or later, you're going to be reminded of what you did. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Even if the person who's been badgering you, yep. that you say you're sorry to, Mm -hmm. uh, accepts your false sorrow. Yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. So the second thing we've listed there is I desire to repent because I want to forget what I've done using the denial of emotion. Yes, in other words, um, this is more like along the line, I don't want to be at, feel what it feels like to have done it. Uh-huh. And so, whereas the other one, is the one we just mentioned is the one about, you know, not wanting to just think about 
the fact we've done it. Yeah, just like I want to deny it even happened. Okay, yeah. right. Okay, I'm sorry. I want to forget all about that yeah. now. Yeah. This one is more that I don't want to feel like what it felt like to do it and also what it feels like to bear the compensation of doing it mm -hmm. and what it feels like to have to go through the, the you know, unhealed emotions from our past in order to repair the cause of why I did it. Yeah. And yeah. so this one's all about, I just don't want to feel any of those emotions. I'm going to get really rigid about feeling those emotions. Yep. So what I'm going to do is I'm claim that I'm sorry. Yeah. So that I don't have to go through any of that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And then we get into this idea of thinking, well, yeah, okay, I did the wrong thing then, but I don't do it now. And so I don't have to feel about what I did. And I'll just, you know, we end up having yeah. sort of I've a I've fixed facade. it now. What are you yeah. complaining about? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm complaining about the fact you're not sorry for what you did. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm complaining about, but, you know, usually the person doesn't see that. Yeah. <laughs> mm. um, the desire to not have any more trouble. Yeah, so here we're saying a lot of times uh, when we don't repent, trouble is perpetrated towards us. Yes. You know, people get resentful, angry with us. You know, mm -hmm. people who don't forgive, that's what happens. They get yeah. resentful, angry. Yeah you know, and, and all this kind of stuff. And I go, well, if I put on the facade of forgiving. Of repenting. Of, sorry, repenting, then oh, that will go away. You know, they'll, they'll go, oh, fair enough. He admitted he did wrong and it'll all stop. Yeah. And, and what you usually find in those cases is that this so-called sort of theatrical uh, um, uh, display of repentance comes with it, a strong demand that everyone get over it. Exactly. And th so often what you find is there's a, like a heavy demand, like, I've said sorry, what are you still carrying so what on about? what are you still carrying on about, woman? <laughs> and as soon as that happens, as soon as that happens, we know it hasn't been true forgiveness. Exactly. And also we end up getting... Because true, true, true repentance... Sorry, repentance. True so repentance doesn't confusing. have the expectation that other people will forgive you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so... Um, yeah, we end up actually putting more demands on our environment when mm -hmm. we want to so just repent again. to get out of trouble. Mm -hmm. And it, yeah, it ends up creating more pain for ourselves and other people. And more for us to repent for. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Next one. The desire to maintain or sustain a relationship overlooking the sin that I have engaged that makes the relationship difficult for others to remain in if they love themselves. Mm. So that when, before we talked about the flip side with mm -hmm, the forgiveness, where I want to overlook the, the harm my partner's doing me, me, so I can hold on to the relationship. And now, again, it's I want you to overlook the harm that I'm doing you mm. so that we can stay in this relationship. Yes. And so I'll... I'll so repent. in other words, I still yeah. want to keep feeding my addictions. I still want to keep damaging the relationship. Yeah. I still want to keep doing it. But I just want the other person to mm. accept it all. Yeah. And and you see this a lot, don't you, where, where couples go, oh, I did it again, sorry. You know, it, it, and it's very false because if we actually yeah. felt badly about it, we... It'd be far bigger deal that we just did something again against yeah. the person. You see it a lot with relationships between parents and children. Yeah. As well as couple relationships. Yes. And friendships and just mm. social. You overlook that I'm hurting you and we yeah. can stay friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not me change my behaviour that's out of harmony with love. Yeah. Yeah. You have to overlook my behaviour out of harmony with love and then yeah. we'll be friends. Yeah. And yeah. if you don't overlook it, well, you're being a bit of a bitch now. You, you're high needs. You're very sensitive, <laughs> you aren't know, you? Yeah, yeah. There's something no, wrong with you. Uh, you know, many why relationships shouldn't like I that. get away with this behaviour? Yeah. You know, yeah. you should overlook it. Yeah. This is who I am, you know. Yeah, yeah. Gosh, you're high needs, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. And there's a lot of terrible projections in that yeah. state. And, it's, yeah. and it demonstrates no repentance whatsoever. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And lastly, the desire... And again, this is not exhaustive list, but no. last that we've listed. And we've co-related this list with repentance list and just the flip side of a lot of it. Yeah, with yeah. the forgiveness list and just flip side a lot of it so that people can see the relationship, if you like. Yeah, and it do these are very common things that occur when people yeah, say they, they want to forgive and say they want to repent and it's completely insincere. Exactly, yeah. 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 And the desire to appear spiritual to ourselves or to others. So... Um, this is where I see people saying, not saying, oh, I want to repent and it's insincere, saying, I don't really have anything to repent for. Yeah. Yeah, and, so often that's the case. Yeah. 
Oh, I'm so developed now. Yeah. And they see they see the, the admission of a mistake as a lack of development rather it's, than the fact that it is... That it's actually improvement of a development. A sign of development. Exactly. Yeah. If yeah. you can admit to your mistakes, it's a sign of development. So, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, it's interesting how, you know, um, most people have this tendency to believe spirituality is perfection. Yeah. And as a result of believing it's perfection, Mm-hmm. Then the then they means that whenever they didn't attain perfection, they weren't spiritual. Yeah. And they say, and if they admit that they did something wrong, then it means they're not perfect and therefore yeah. not spiritual. And so they can never be sincere in repentance. Then no, no. no. Yeah. So um, with regards to this issue of repentance, mm-hmm. there's a lot of misconception on the planet about self punishment as repentant as a repentant state Mm. and in fact many parents promote in their children a state Mm -hmm. of self-punishment and actually say oh now i can see you're sorry Mm. so how much does this um false set of beliefs around what it means to repent um interfere with us having a sincere or in or creating an insincere desire around repentance are you asking about specifically about self-punishment uh, I was, but uh, any any false belief from childhood surrounding repentance, if you like. Yeah. So usually in our childhood, in our childhood state, what happened was that we were taught that certain behaviours prove repentance mm. when they actually don't. Mm-hmm. And one of those behaviours that we were taught generally is to either blame ourselves mm-hmm. or punish ourselves. And, and that can be through um, emotional punishment of ourselves, physical punishment of ourselves. Yes. Yeah, so here we're talking in context now about if we have actually done something wrong. Yeah. To avoid the punishment of others mm-hmm. and to avoid God's punishment, we mm-hmm. believe that if we punish ourselves, we'll be able to avoid those things. Yeah. And so we enter this state where we fake a punishment of ourselves. Yeah. Really. Yeah. In order to avoid punishment from others or from God. Yeah. And and when I say God doesn't punish us, he's correcting us anyway. Yeah. But we definitely do, do it to avoid punishment from parents and so forth yeah. generally. Or yeah. from other people that we yeah. you know, that might withdraw from us as a result of our sin. Mm. Now these are learned behaviors mm. that are also highly manipulative mm. and completely insincere, mm-hmm. which also have as a result their own compensatory effects in yeah. other words they are sins yeah for which will be corrected yeah and uh, and we need to see them as such yeah whereas most people seem to see self-punishment in particular as a good thing you know like yeah. i'm punishing myself well i should be able to you, you should stop it now yeah or you should stop having you telling me what the consequences of my behavior are now because i've already punished myself now I've, yeah yeah. And these kind of things. Yeah. God's, God is not motivated by the punishment. Mm. He is motivated by the correction. Yeah. And if you punish yourself and think that that's a way of manipulating other people from absolving you of your sins, mm-hmm. then there is no correction. Yeah. And therefore, not sincere repentance yeah. Yeah. as a result. Yeah. So we need to understand that everything from God's perspective is about a sincere correction of the underlying states that caused our behavior, Mm -hmm. not engaging further facade Mm -hmm. in order to have a facade of repentance Mm -hmm. that doesn't correct our original feelings and motivations for our behavior. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank Mm. you. Mm. Sincere or loving emotions that permit repentance. Mm. So now we're speaking conversely. We just spoke about the insincere Mm -hmm. things that Mm -hmm. prevent our repentance. Mm. Um, Now we'd like to ask, what are some motivations to repent that are sincere or loving and therefore are going to bring about true repentance? Yeah. Now, this list, of course, is, is quite similar to the repent, to, to the, the forgiveness, forgiveness list as well yep. in regard to the same statement about emotions that permit forgiveness. forgiveness. So the emotions that permit repentance are, uh, or the sincere, loving emotions permitting repentance are the desire to remember and feel everything. Mm-hmm. Every emotion, every thought, event. every event, every, every action you've taken, every behaviour, everything. Yep. 
you can see that if you had a strong desire to do that, to remember your life, and if you think about it, that's quite a loving thing to do because then you remember your whole existence. You remember yeah. everything that's happened in your life and why it happened and everything. This is very, very positive for you. Mm -hmm. So it is a, it's also loving to yourself to do this, of course. Yeah. Uh, but that will also help you generate a sincere desire to repent because because what you'll do is you'll remember every emotion you remember, oh, there I went acting on that unloving emotion and look what I did to that person. And yes. there I went acting on this unloving emotion and look what I did to that person and so forth. Yeah. But remember too, it still has to be God's definition, definition of, of sin. Yeah. So it's not like there I went and told the truth and look what happened. <laughs> it's not like that. Because <laughs> that, that would be a, a false recognition. That's not a sin. Yeah. And, and I see that happening for people too yeah. sometimes where they, they say, oh, I told them the truth and look at the disaster it caused. No, it didn't cause a disaster. The person responded disastrously, mm -hmm. but that was their choice. Yeah. Um, it didn't cause a disaster. Telling the truth was the right thing to do. Yeah. Right? So we've got to make sure we measure here from God's perspective, not from our own. Yes. Mm. Yes. The desire to repair every relationship. Yes, obviously repenting has a huge effect on relationships. Massive. Huge, massive effect on relationships because, because every way we've damaged our relationships are now, as we repair them, we have the potential now to not only recover the relationships that have been damaged, mm -hmm. but also now to never perpetrate those same kinds of damage upon future relationships. Mm. And also we learn through this process of repentance, don't we? Not only um, the effects of our sin and, you know, how it actually affected the person that we harmed and other people, mm -hmm. but we also learn what it means to truly love, uh, what it means to actually love that other person, to have a truly loving relationship, what that's like and what it feels like and what it looks like and how it actually is from God's perspective. Yeah. That's one of the gifts and, of and repenting, isn't it? certainly isn't, isn't it? me attacking them or harming them. No. <laughs> Or, or causing pain for them all the time. Or meeting codependent addictions with them. Yeah, or, or and trying to say to them, well, you should put up with all that. Yes. You know, it's not certainly yeah. not that. And we know that for certain and we never want to engage it again. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, <clears throat> the desire to be truthful in every relationship. Hmm. So that desire to be truthful is going to lead me towards... Um, the desire to own up to what I've done, which is going to lead me to closer towards repentance, isn't it? That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. As we've discussed, truth is a very important factor in both forgiveness and repentance. Yeah. And repentance is all about truth. You're owning up to the truth, God's truth, mm -hmm. about how this particular event that you engaged mm -hmm. hurt and harmed other people Mm -hmm. the environment, yourself and God, mm -hmm. your relationship with God. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're being truthful about yeah. it. And be, by being truthful about it, this is going to help you open up emotionally and therefore permit repentance to occur. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Fantastic. The desire to be ethical and moral, even if it causes so-called problems. Mm. Mm. So this is where like an ethical thing to do is to say, if, if you did do something wrong and you, and, and you now can see what's wrong, admitting to the wrong is a very important thing. Now, here, give an example of that. We often see in legal cases mm -hmm. where the lawyer does not want you to admit to the wrong. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But here, what we're basically saying that you've got to have faith in God's laws and the way God's laws operate mm -hmm. and admit the wrong yeah. and, and repent for the wrong and just let the laws do what they do is in reward for taking this action in harmony with love. Yeah, that's a part of faith, isn't it? That yes. if I do do this uh, truthful, ethical, moral thing, that God's laws are going to not only support me, but reward me for that. Exactly. Yeah. And many people forget that, of yeah. course. They don't have faith in that. So yeah. it's the desire, remember, comes from faith that if we do the right thing, mm -hmm. we will be rewarded. Right? And, and so we need to have this desire to be ethical and moral, even if it seems to create problems, because the reality is it's also alleviating a lot of problems, yeah. even if we don't feel them initially. Yeah. We don't feel the alleviation of the problem initially. It, it will alleviate a lot of problems if we're ethical and moral about what we've done. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And this includes wanting to pay back to people like, recompense for what we've done mm. 
Mm-hmm. So, you know, if we stole things from them, give them back those things if you can. Yes. Or do a bit of work for them to pay it off or mm-hmm. something. Do something mm. that indicates that you are sorry for what you've done. Yeah. yeah. Or even like I know you've said to me many times here, you ate meat for a lot of years in your life. And so a lot of the expenditure that we have now is actually on environmental restoration. So mm-hmm. that's not towards a person, but it's really towards environment well, and well every good thing is towards a person always it's because we're recording people. and videoing yeah. it and showing yes. people it on the internet yes. and all those other things and all yeah. those things will be recorded so it will benefit others but one of the primary reasons why i'm doing it is because i understand like i've done a lot of damage to the environment through my behavior mm-hmm. in the past and now i've got to go through what it's like to fix the environment yeah. and what kind of things i'm going to have to do and to that's fix the part of your your desire your sincere desire to repent to to remedy so when i'm out there digging through piles of you know hardwood chips or whatever and putting spreading around and you know doing all this hard labor i'm not going oh oh, (laughs) and let's get this over and done i'm thinking no this is all part of my you know this is all part of my learning experience in terms of seeing what i need to do to recover an environment yeah that has been damaged in the way that i damaged it yeah Mm. yeah very good The desire to acknowledge the sin committed by me and how this sin has damaged my relationship with others. So once we get into this kind of desire, we're well on the way to to starting to engage repentance, aren't we? And here we start to see that that um, relationship, my relationship with others have been damaged because of my actions. See, most of the time we don't believe that we believe it's always somebody else's fault that there is a reason why there's a fissure in the relationship Mm -hmm. and we don't really see no no there's time there's times because of what i did there's now a fissure in the relationship yeah and and that needs to be addressed yeah and we i also notice too here that a lot of people you know a person who's going through the process of forgiveness might Mm -hmm. just raise their voice a bit or get a bit angry or or whatever with the person who needs to repent Mm -hmm. now if the person who needs to repent is honest about it they could say yeah, I, I've treated this person for years like this. Yeah. It's natural they're going to have probably a bit of anger as they're talking to me about it. Definitely. And yet, if I get angry in return and say, how dare you, Razel, how dare you treat me this way, how dare you? Now what I'm actually doing is showing that I have no desire to repent, yeah. even the other, though the other person is attempting to go through the process of forgiveness. Yeah. Right? And that's definitely not going to repair this relationship. No. Right? So, so we've got to have some idea of how God sees it. If we've treated someone badly for years and years and years and they get a bit angry about it now, of course they're going to get a bit angry about it now going through their forgiveness process. Yeah. But if I then go all resentful and go, how dare you go through all that? You know, you're being angry with me now. You should stop this anger with me now. And I'll go through all of those kind of things, those kind of feelings. Yeah. Then, then basically I'm proving that I have no intention of repenting. Of repenting. Mm. Absolutely. Okay, and finally, the desire to permanently remove the causes of sin within myself so that I no longer feel impelled to harm others in any situation. Mm. So here I'm saying, right, yes, I did this act that hurt you, but I want to deal with this problem to such a degree that not only will I not hurt you now again Mm. that i've acknowledged that i've hurt you and i I don't want to hurt you again i will never more hurt you or anyone else in the same situation as you in the same way in the same way yeah and that that, that's about going okay i really want to get to the cause of this problem not just deal with the effects the effects being that you might be upset with me or whatever yeah i want to get right down to the nitty-gritty basic underlying emotional cause mm-hmm. of what drove my desire to harm yeah. and deal with that yeah mm. yeah fantastic mm. the inevitability of forgiveness and repentance <laughs> so now we're getting on to some of the final questions in this session yeah, yeah. and this is a question i wanted to include uh um to, towards the end here Uh, Is it inevitable that one day I'll forgive others or repent towards others that I've harmed? Mm -hmm. Or is it something I can choose to not do forever? One would think, given that we have free will, that 
um, it's not inevitable that you know that that, that I can choose forever. That I could choose forever to not forgive or not repent. That's mm -hmm. what you might believe, right? Mm -hmm. But it's a really a physical impossibility mm -hmm. because there's so many things working to make you get to the point of forgiving and repenting. Mm. So, and we we need to go through what some of those things are that are yes. working on you. Yes. That, it's like your soul's in this, once, once there's things inside of you that you have to forgive yeah. or things inside of you that you need to repent for, yeah. your soul's like this is in pressure cooker yes. because there's all these laws and everything and, and working constantly against the condition of the soul trying to correct it mm. so it's like woo, 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 all the time now you imagine it goes on for five years well we might be able to put up with it 10 maybe even a hundred but can you imagine putting up with that for a thousand or mm. ten thousand mm. eventually you're going to crack right mm. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's how god's designed the system eventually you get around to the point where it's inevitable that you're gonna have a crack sometime so you might as well make that time as soon as possible <laughs> rather than as long as possible yes. way, you know yeah mm -hmm. and in a way the more you actively engage with the process the more the pressure cooker seems to heat up for a while, doesn't it? Oh, it, just it, at the initial portions, yeah, yeah it does, because yeah. it's showing you that, yes, you're right, there is yeah. this thing and it's happening, and yes, you're right, and we need to go through these processes, which is all good for you, really. Exactly, But, yeah. But, man, like, if you think you're going to be able to live forever without repenting or live forever without forgiving, impossible, yeah. impossible, yeah. yeah, for lots of lots of reasons. Let's talk about <laughs> some of the reasons. <laughs> yeah. So time makes both forgiveness and repentance inevitable. Yeah. What do we mean by that? God's laws operate every single moment of every single day, of every single year, of every single decade, of every single millennium of your life. <laughs> and they have a compounding effect, don't they? The compensation yes. works in a compounding fashion. And they don't stop and yeah. they just don't stop. And yeah. they keep grinding and yeah. they keep grinding yeah. and they keep grinding and they keep grinding and they last longer than you can handle. <laughs> yeah. So the workings of time is meaning you're being worked down. There's a constant that uh, energy source that's not being exhausted yeah. that is working against your resistance. And the real decision is how much pain and suffering for how long do you want to yes. put up with it? Yes. That's really the decision you make. Which is our second point. <laughs> exactly. Oh, no. Uh, well, it's one point one further point down. Further but, down. Yeah. Um, so God's laws make both forgiveness and repentance inevitable. Yeah, so the laws, as I said, so time grinds against you mm -hmm. because the laws are grinding against you over the period of time. Yeah. So, so sure, you might be able to enjoy, you know, working against the law for a year or two years or five years or your whole life on earth, mm -hmm. but you're not going to handle doing it for the rest of your existence. Yeah. You're just not. Yeah. Because God's laws are perfectly weighted, perfectly measured, perfectly have perfect outcomes. They are, and, and the law combined with time, there's no way you're going to resist it. Yeah. 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 And then, as you've already mentioned, pain caused by holding on to hurt um, makes forgiveness inevitable. Yes. So the fact that I've, been hurt and I'm holding on to it. Yes. Yeah, so the more resistance you have to letting it go, the more pain you have. So your pain increases. Now, the laws are already working and time's already working, but now not only are laws and time already working, but the pain's increasing over the time. Yes. Yes. So it's getting pretty Eventually intense. Eventually you're going to get to the point where the pain is too great yes. for you to contemplate doing anything else other than going forgiving. through the process. That's right. <laughs> and then we, when it comes to repentance, the personal pain I have that mm -hmm. is caused by me hurting others mm -hmm. is going, that's going to make repentance inevitable, isn't it? Yes. Remember that God measures not only the effects, but the flow on effects of my choices and decisions that hurt others. So I could hurt you and then you, because of that hurt, might do things that hurt others. Yeah. And that will all be traced back. Or a lot of that will be traced back to me as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, wow, that, when, you, when you start seeing that, you start going, whoa, you know, that means that time, law, 
and your pain is also contributing to my pain. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Whoa, you know, so now if your pain and you cause pain for others as a result of my pain caused to you, mm -hmm. that's going to also increase my pain. Yeah. Oh, there's a sort of multiplication effect of my hurt. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, big deal, hey? So really what we're saying is that everything is working towards the inevitability of us both forgiving and repenting. Yep. And it's just how long we're going to fight that, how long we're going to resist that process. Yep, that's the decision. And keeping in mind that the longer we fight... The worse it's going to get. The worse it's actually going to be for us. So it would make much more sense to give up the fight of course and go through the pain now that's already here with us now because yeah. the longer we fight it the more pain we're accruing that's right the pain whether we, it comes to the pain we have now even no, no matter how intense it is mm. the pain we have now is less than the pain we're gonna have in the future if we don't do it literally the the amount of pain we're gonna have tomorrow is more than the amount of pain we have today correct yeah if we don't do it yeah so really what we're consigning ourselves to by refusing is a more and more and more painful and life full of suffering that's mm. what we're doing so it doesn't make any logical sense to do that mm. really so is it is it about the the amount of pain i can tolerate or Sometimes. Survive or resist or, yeah, or live sometimes. through, that's going to cause... Because I come from a long line on my mother's side of people who people are survivors. People who are, who what is the word, the stoic and... Stoic, but they <laughs> live a long time and they survive a lot of gear <laughs> and they don't feel very much. No. And, <laughs> and so um, they seem to have sort of... Gener uh, cultivated a an injury which is about the fighting the survival the resistance to pain mm -hmm. that that is actually not working in my favor now correct you're far yeah. better off choosing to be sensitive to the pain yes you're far better off just submitting surrendering to it yes and submitting to the whole process than you are fighting like that yeah. I, it's a really interesting why people fight. There's a lot mm -hmm. of emotional motivations, which is a separate discussion in itself. Yeah. But if we are fighting the process of forgiveness or repentance, we need to in, analyze ourselves more honestly to yeah. find out why. Why is it we're so terrified of like this whole process of forgiveness and mm -hmm. repentance? Mm -hmm. Is it fear or is it rage that's causing us yeah. to fight so strongly? And, and what false beliefs drive our desire to fight the process, which is a process that is inevitably going to happen at some point in our future. So me identifying this familial injury and then starting to deconstruct the family-based false beliefs that drive that injury, yes. that is going to help me immensely in the forgiveness and repentance yes. process. It will so, sensitize your yeah. soul to what needs to be forgiven and to what needs to be repented for. And the beauty of doing that is that will speed up your process significantly. The more sensitive you are, mm -hmm. the more you're capable of processing through emotion rapidly yeah. and understanding what the emotion's all about. Yeah. So you want the sensitivity. Yes. You don't want to avoid it. You don't want to become stoic and no. resistive. And the more stoic and resistive you become, the more laws you're breaking. So, you know, there's going to be more pain as a result when you finally have your breakthrough. Yeah. You're far better off having your breakthrough, your surrender, yeah. as early as possible. Yeah. So the key is to focus on surrender yes. to, the, to the painful emotions associated with both, both processes, forgiveness yeah. and repentance. Yeah. Surrender as soon as possible. Yeah. Go through the process. Desire the surrender. Mm -hmm. Stop telling yourself that it's a good thing that you're strong. Yeah. It's not a good thing. It's mm. causing damage to the process. If you want to be strong, be strong in ethics. Yes. Be strong in morals. Strong in coping with emotion. It'd be strong in your confidence that you can handle any emotion. And exactly. be strong in your faith. Be strong in truth. Be strong in faith. Be strong in your desire to your love. Your faith that feeling is going to lead to really good outcomes. Yeah. And th that's the kind of strength I'm aiming for these exactly. days. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Stop thinking that resisting is strength. It's yeah. not. It's yeah. weakness. It's yes. fear. Yes. It's anger. It's weakness. Yeah. Get rid of it yeah. out of your life and, and focus your attention on what is really strong, yeah. which is 
completely feeling your way through every emotion so that you learn in the long run you can cope with anything yes you can cope with any person damaging you you can cope with any situation or situation you know and you're, you're going to be loving lovingly. and yep. you're going to be happy as a result of that and yep. have confidence in that yes yeah beautiful <laughs> beautiful thank you the completion of forgiveness and repentance mm. How do I know that it's all finished? How do I know it's all done? <laughs> <laughs> and we actually, I actually, when I was preparing this outline, I had some spirits come along and ask mm -hmm. questions about this. Mm -hmm. So, so let's get on to this. It's interesting, isn't it, that most people want to tell themselves it's done. Yeah. Way before it's done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, most people want to tell themselves it's done before they've even Stop. started. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Absolutely. That's all those insincere motivations we talked exactly, about, isn't it? Exactly. Yep. <laughs> all right. So the completion of forgiveness. Mm. How will I know when my forgiveness is complete? How will I know I've fully forgiven someone for a past wrong? Very simply, when the emotional pain and suffering associated with what they have done mm -hmm. is no longer able to be felt by you mm -hmm. and no longer be able to be remembered emotionally mm -hmm. then you've forgiven mm -hmm. and it's done beautiful now god's laws will tell you when it's done yeah because you you will soon find the law of attraction will cease mm -hmm. like there's nothing to be attracted anymore nothing for the law to operate upon mm -hmm. to cause it to trigger more emotion yeah it just ceases it stops there's no of the same negative events that start uh, that occur to trigger the emotion. And if the, and, and if somebody else engages the negative event on purpose, because there's no if they can't do it through attraction, mm. they have to do it purposefully. Mm -hmm. And you still don't feel anything. Yeah, you don't. You, it's all gone. The whole thing is gone, including now you find that you're able to forgive immediately. Mm. Uh, that's when you know it's gone. Yeah. If somebody wrongs you. It's immediate forgiveness that you feel for them. Beautiful. Immediate compassion, immediate understanding, immediate acknowledgement of their sin, mm. immediately seeing that they were the cause of it, immediately yeah. seeing all of those things. And it's without anger or blame or anything else. It's no. just, I know it I and know I'm neutral sin, about it. I know it. it's wrong yeah. and I know yeah. I, I don't feel bad about it anymore. Yeah. But that I know that you did the wrong thing and I even know why. Yeah. I know it's because you I feel this and you feel that and you feel this and it was that cause and you, you know everything, in mm -hmm. fact. And this is how you can even tell people exactly what it is that's causing them to sin. Mm. And, and, and you can give them the time of day to do it, Yeah. even though they're sinning against you. Yes, and you can do it in a very calm, a very logical, a very... Um, yeah. A, a way that's not about getting anything for yourself or, no, or, or creating their behavior or anything controlling like their behavior or creating a, a situation in them where they want to do anything about it you yep. just can say the truth about it yeah now if most people look at my interactions with them they can see that i've reached that point with yes. my with them mostly yeah and um, you know mm -hmm. i always can explain to them what's going on always can explain to them how, how it feels I have compassion and understanding mm -hmm. for how it got caused yeah. and all of those things. And those all things are automatic once you've forgiven. Forgiven, mm. yeah. yeah. Mm. The completion of repentance. Mm. So how will I know when my repentance is complete? How will I know I've fully repented for a past wrong? Yeah, well, there's two phases to this, isn't there? There's mm -hmm. firstly the emotional signature of the pain and suffering that I caused to another through my action or behaviour that was sinful. Mm -hmm. And I've felt about all of that. So I, I know what it felt like for them to yeah. have to go through what yeah. I put them through. Yeah. I feel like a deep amount of remorse mm -hmm. <clears throat> about what I put them through because I know how bad it felt yeah. putting them through it. You, you know what they went through, really. Yeah. Well, yes, because you've had to feel what they went through in order to repent. Yes. So you've actually felt what it felt like to be like that, yeah. to be under that, you know, uh, as to have that sin perpetrated against them. You, you yourself now feel what it felt like for them mm. to do that. Mm. So, so in other words, you feel what it felt like for them to have to go through forgiveness. Yeah of what you did yeah right so that's number one or if, if they haven't yet forgiven 
Oh, even if they haven't been forgiven, what you, you will know through. what they have to go through yeah. too. Yeah. And that, that generates quite a lot of, of compassion yeah. and understanding. And you can imagine if you forgive someone before, sorry, you repent before somebody forgives you, yeah. you know exactly what they're going to have to go through as a result. The difficulties the they're difficulties going to have to face. Difficulties they're going to face. Yeah. And also when they raise issues with you that yeah. are truthful about what you did, yeah. you're going to be supportive of their decisions and choices there yeah. to raise those issues with you. And you'll even be tolerant to a degree of their rage and anger yes. about having to so, raise those specific issues with you that are actual sins that God recognises as yes. sins. Yes. So that's number one. Yep. The second thing is that you're going to also know and have gone through the emotional signature relating to past events that generated within you the desire to sin and the desire to sin in that manner mm -hmm. will also have disappeared from you. Yes, completely erased, isn't completely it? Completely erased. You no longer, you've gone through and you understand why you chose to make the choices you actually chose to make. Mm -hmm. You understand completely why you've decided to do them. Mm -hmm. And you've actually gone through the emotions required to release those reasons from you. Yeah. So that no longer do those emotions and desires drive you mm -hmm. to harm others, harm the environment, harm yourself or harm your relationship with God. Yeah. So once you've done those things, your f repentance process is complete. It's complete. Yeah. Mm. Very, very beautiful um, place to be in where all of that's removed. And, yes. Yeah. Yes. So now if both forgiveness and repentance are complete, you can imagine the freedom mm -hmm. you feel. You have no guilt left inside of you, mm. no shame left inside of you, no feelings of remorse needed because they've all gone as well. And you'll even struggle at times to remember after that point, you will not be able to remember emotionally what it feels like anymore mm -hmm. to have done those things. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, there are times when you even struggle to intellectually recall mm. what it was like. So, and this is how we almost become a new person, isn't it? A Com completely new person. Yeah. We're born again. Yeah. Mm. Just uh, uh, not just in God's love, but we're born again in the manner of being a completely new person with regard to sin. Yeah. Now I'm saying, remember, we're, and, and we will see later, that the repentance process can't be completed without God. Yeah. And hence requires the process of being born again yes. to be completed. To be completed. But the repentance process can be completed with people and can be completed with towards you, ourselves, and our actions you, towards ourselves. You're saying we can complete it without a relationship with God. We can, we we can we complete repent. repentance towards a person, yes. and we can complete repentance towards the environment, without and we can complete God. repentance towards ourselves mm -hmm. without God. Yeah. But we can't complete repentance towards God without God. Without God. Yeah. yeah. So that's a teaser for what's still to come in this series. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Mm. yeah. <laughs> So everyone, that concludes our third session on God's laws and principles pertaining to forgiveness and repentance. As a quick recap, what we've covered so far in this series is God's truth, uh, how to discover God's truth, how, why God created God's laws, and then we've talked extensively about God's truth about the processes of forgiveness and repentance. We've covered the personal aspects of what we're going to have to engage, what that emotional process will be like for us to engage forgiveness and repentance. And today we've spoken specifically about our role and responsibility to forgive and repent. That's not actually an optional thing. God's <laughs> laws are, are making sure that it happens. Yeah. Uh, we've spoken a lot about sin today, accidental sin versus intentional sin. And we've, we've also discussed the ways that we avoid sin and the implications of that. That is that we can't begin forgiveness and repentance hmm. unless we're willing to acknowledge sin. So this, this huge tendency for individuals and society to ignore sin has very large implications. Hmm. And finally, we've just spoken um, about developing sincerity in, hmm. in our process of forgiveness and repentance. Hmm. Uh, and what it's going to look like as we complete forgiveness and repentance. So 
Hope you've enjoyed our session. It's been a long session for us today. In our next session, we're going to be speaking about specifically about compensation and how that relates to forgiveness and repentance. Mm. So I look forward to seeing all of you sometime in the future and another and another discussion about this subject. Yeah. Obviously, as we've mentioned before, we probably have seven or eight sessions we're going to yeah. have to cover before we get to answering some of the questions of people. Yes. But when we get to answer the questions, obviously we'll have covered a lot of material yeah. and so our answers will make sense to them then. Yeah. But and we've tried, haven't we, to really present a lot of truth about this subject mm. before we get down to addressing people's um, particular misunderstandings and injuries in the way that they interpret uh, the issues of forgiveness and repentance, because um, that gives us a lot to not only draw upon, but it's a contrast, isn't it, between what is God's truth and how we commonly see it. Yeah. And it's good to talk about those two things. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. thanks for your time, darling. Yeah. It's been no, a long, thank you for your day. It's, it's been a, a long, long day, day for our for our filmers as well today. I think we've thank been going guys. seven and a half hours or so. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you guys it's for, for that. It's gotten dark day. It's gotten dark outside. <laughs> so, uh, but we look forward to our next discussion, which uh, yeah. which we hope will be about, I think it's about compensation. compensation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we'll talk about compensation and how it relates to forgiveness and yeah. repentance. Yeah. So. so look forward to seeing you then. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.